This is an art attack? This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> Here's a good one for you. How do you do a prehistoric cave painting on your own bedroom wall? Newspaper. Come and have a look at this. Take a big double page spread of newspaper, open it out, and then crumple some other sheets of newspaper up very loosely, and just lay them down flat on one side of the newspaper, like that. And then fold your newspaper over like that, and then just go around all of the edges and fold over a thin strip back on itself like that and as you're doing it staple it down it's also a good idea just to fold back the corners and staple them too and when you've gone all the way around your newspaper you'll have something that looks a bit like that it's sort of a paper parcel really and then just gently pat it and get rid of all the big lumps or any excess air in there and that will now be the surface of your cave wall. So then, this is the good bit. This is the messy bit. Take some PVA glue, just the ordinary white school glue in the squidgy bottles, and just carefully pour it on like that, and then brush it all over the surface of your newspaper. Now, I'm using a big brush here, as you can see, but it's a good idea for you just to take some time over this. Use your brush and just make sure you cover the whole of the surface of your newspaper pillow or your cave wall. And when you've completely covered the surface of your cave, just take some sand, grate this, watch this, and just pour it all over your cave wall. You can see already it's starting to stick to the glue, like that. And then, immediately, don't wait, immediately just shake off all the excess. Like that. And if there are any bits that you've missed, just dab on some glue, put more sand on there, and then leave it to dry overnight. And when it's dry, it will have gone crispy and hard, and it will look like that. Perfect for doing a cave painting on. And to do your cave drawing or painting, best thing to use is wax crayon or chalk. Now, to make your drawing look authentic, it doesn't have to be brilliant, because I don't think they were very good artists in those days. Obviously, they didn't watch Art Attack. And they were quite fond of doing hunting scenes, and animals and people. So, just do a very simple animal. Oh, and if your crayon breaks, don't worry. It means you've got two of them then. And you can always do some stick people in, because, again, they weren't that good at drawing people. So just put some stick people in. One there, one there, I think. And maybe some arrows flying through the sky. And even a sun in the corner. And then to colour it in, well, again, they didn't have many colours. So the best thing to do is use earthy colours, like browns, reds, oranges. And just going over the whole of your painting, at least the whole of your horse or wherever it is, buffalo, mammoth. And you can just feel the sand, the grittiness of the sand, wearing away your wax crane as you're doing it. And maybe just a bit of yellow there for the sun. Some green grass, just a bit on the floor, and finally, just a little bit of blue for the sky. And again, I'll say, just keep your drawing very basic, and there it is, a prehistoric cave painting. <laughs>
Allez, n'y qu'un pied. and it would have been a catastrophe. A catastrophe! <laughs> oh, really? How do you turn a quick doodle like this on an old scrap piece of paper into a work of art with a doodle frame? Take a piece of paper that's roughly twice the size of your doodle and a different colour and then place your doodle roughly in the middle of the paper. And the great thing about this is you don't have to be precise. And then just put a dot on each of the four corners of your doodle on the backing paper, like that, and then draw a box from each of the dots to the four corners, and again, doesn't have to be precise, this is just a guide mark. And then take a pair of scissors and just snip out each of those boxes. Let's just see if you can guess what it is I'm doing here. Again, you don't have to be accurate with this, and let's face it, Nothing on Art Attack ever is, is it? There it is. I like doing things rough like this. Now, at this point, I've got a piece of paper like that with four flaps on it. And it doesn't matter about these marks, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a felt pen or coloured pencil that's the same colour as your paper, but a bit darker, and just draw some squiggles going backwards and forwards across each of the flaps. Again, you don't have to be neat, because it's a sort of... Well, wood effect that I'm looking for. I'm just going backwards and forwards with the grain like that on the flaps. And then when you've done that, it looks a bit like cartoon wood really, doesn't it? When you've done that, fold the flaps into the middle very roughly. Turn them around, one in there, another one in there. I'm doing this very quickly just to show you, but you can take a bit of time over it and do it nice and carefully. And then when you've done that, open the flaps up, turn your paper over, and you have to be careful with this. Just very carefully roll a pencil very tightly, like that, into each of the four flaps. Just rolling it over, nice and tight, like that. And then do each of those four flaps, and when you've done it, you will have something that looks remarkably like that. And then turn it over, and just pull these rolls back in like that, where you roll the pencil in, just put them into shape, and then just put it to one side, and take your doodle, and then just cut off two centimetres down one of the sides, and then another two centimetres down the top. Now again, you don't have to be accurate with this, whatever you do, don't 
push them out of the way there. Piece of paper fighting with me. Whatever you do, don't measure it with a ruler or try and do it too neatly because the effect that I'm looking for, yeah, look at that, is a sort of wonky effect that looks like that. Then bring your frame back in and just put your picture onto your frame, glue it in position, and there you have a piece of zany art. They are basically very simple. Just snip the corners out and roll the sides around a pencil. Uh, oh yes, uh, you should remember to take the pencils out. My name is Kate and I have drawn a picture of a vase in charcoal. Hello, I am Lee and this is my picture of Fuffin and around the edges I smashed in charcoal. Ah, weren't they fantastic charcoal pictures? And did you notice all the different effects and techniques that they used? Well, you know, a lot of artists like to use charcoal for just roughly marking in their pictures before painting them. And I like to do that. The reason for that is you can alter your mistakes very easily. Look at that. It's just a case of rubbing it out with your finger and going over it again. And another reason I like to use charcoal is you can get so many different shades and tones just from the one stick. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'm just shading in an area of black. Now watch this. If I just smear it across with my fingers, you start to get this other sort of tone in front of the black bit. And again, I can almost do an arm there just by smearing my fingers across the charcoal. A little bit of shadow in the back there. And of course, you can use the charcoal on its side to create these big areas of black. Or you can use the charcoal as a pointed implement just to put in some extra detail like that. In fact, you can even sharpen your charcoal with a pencil sharpener. After all, it's just a piece of wood, isn't it? In fact, the way they make charcoal is they bake twigs at a very high temperature in a special oven. So next time you're using charcoal, just think, you're painting with a burnt stick. There it is. And just go down there, create a bit of shadow down there, around the corner, and again, just rubbing out your mistakes. Now that's a little bit too dark there. I want something else in there. and. If you've got all these sort of dark, dirty smudges all over your picture, don't worry about that, because it all adds to that moody effect. Just put in some more detail down there, like that, and a bit more on the corner here. And again, you can just put in some detail either with a rubber or using your finger. Look at that there. And I'm just going to put in some more detail with the tip of the charcoal, like that. I need to rub some more out in there. Can you guess what this is yet? Well, you should be able to get it now. Watch this. And there it is, across there, like that. And there he is, the fisherman. And if you do your charcoal picture on some coloured paper, like I've done, you could always finish it off just with a dab of chalk on the edge like that to create a highlight. Look at that. It just picks up the light right on the edge. And very effective it is too. And there it is, gun fishing. Try it yourself, a charcoal attack. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!